As go the engraved words upon the gravestone of the not-so-immortal pioneer of flight, Otto Lilienthal, sacrifices have to be made. In pursuit of scientific knowledge and discovery, there will always be those who step out over and beyond the call of duty. This video is not about those brave people. This video is for those who've completely launched themselves beyond the call of duty on a motorbike made of science and insanity. Number 10. Robert Bunsen Born in 1811, Robert Bunsen is most notable now for the invention which carries his name, the famous Bunsen burner. Actually, this was developed by his assistant, but well, that's another story altogether. This feat, however, was not all that Bunsen was remarkable for, thanks to a lesser known yet significantly more awesome aspect of his history. Robert Bunsen was sort of like science's answer to Die Hard. During 1840, Bunsen decided to begin working with compounds known as cacodils, despite the knowledge that these cacodils had a number of well-researched risks associated with them. Namely, they are highly explosive, extremely toxic, containing the poison arsenic, liable to combustion in dry air, and perhaps worst of all, the name cacodil is derived from the Greek word for evil smelling. Unfazed and ready to swing some punches for science, Bunsen stepped bravely into the metaphorical ring and promptly lost an eye to a a ridiculously predictable cacodil explosion. A flesh wound like a burnt out eye was not enough to diminish Bunsen's dedication, and he continued his studies undeterred right up until he contracted arsenic poisoning. He continued to experiment with cacodils, braving the effects of the arsenic poisoning, which included muscle cramps, severe diarrhea, partial paralysis, and death, all of which he suffered in his life at one point or another. Eventually, after an impressive and kind of baffling six years of living with cacodils, he did move on to safer work, namely taking gas samples from volcanoes and inside blast furnaces. Number 9. Francis Bacon one of the most well-known figures of the 16th century, Francis Bacon was a renowned scientist, politician, lawyer, philosopher, and Oh, you know, he did pretty much everything. Aside from single-handedly raising unemployment rates in England by doing everyone's job, the deliciously named Bacon pretty much pioneered the scientific method that's still in use today. One of Bacon's many contributions to science was the discovery that snow could be used to preserve meat. Upon having this idea, Bacon decided that there was absolutely no time to lose and reportedly charged out headfirst into the snow to investigate without bothering to dress appropriately or return to warmth within a reasonable time frame despite the freezing temperature. He contracted and eventually died from pneumonia, but at least the turkey he stuffed with snow was well preserved. Number 8. John Stapp Back in the 1940s, as recently as 1945, it was believed that the number of G-forces required to kill a man was 18G. John Stapp decided to challenge this belief and did it in the same way any rational man of science would. He strapped himself to a rocket and subjected his own damn body to it. He performed many variations of these experiments into deceleration throughout his career, suffering a whole host of different injuries, including broken limbs, ribs, detached retinas, and various other traumas, which eventually resulted in lifelong lingering vision problems caused by permanently burst blood vessels in his eyes. You'd think that this might cause him to at least tone down the experiments a little, but, well, you'd be wrong. A man in a rocket apparently difficult to slow down. In one of his final experiments, he subjected himself to an astonishing 46.2 times the force of gravity. Number 7. Santorio 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 was an Italian professor and colleague of Galileo who just happened to be curiously obsessed by the workings of the human body. So obsessed was he that he elected for 30 years from 1590 to 1620 to spend most of his time living in a tiny room suspended by giant scales. He also weighed everything coming into his body as well as everything leaving it in what has to be one of the least pleasant bizarre experiments on this list. His experiment is widely celebrated for its empirical methodology, measuring everything and ensuring all findings were accurate and originated the study of the human metabolism. Number 6. Lazzaro Spallanzani Another Italian with an obsession with digestion, Lazzaro regularly swallowed sponges on strings, pulling them back out once they'd absorbed his stomach fluids. Clearly, this wasn't already unusual enough, as he proceeded to add various kinds of food to these sponges and even hold them under his arms, reportedly taking them to such events as church services with him in order to observe digestion in action. His research led to the basis of our modern understanding of digestion. Number 5. John Scott Haldane and John B.S. Haldane 
A British physiologist with an admirable amount of dedication to make up for his apparent lack of self-preservation instinct, John Scott Haldane was widely known for his expert knowledge of the respiratory system along with his intrepid self-experimenting, namely sealing himself within an airtight chamber and subjecting himself to lethal cocktails of gases while recording their effects on his mind and body. His son, John B.S. Haldane, followed in his father's footsteps, depriving himself of oxygen long enough to trigger a damaging fit and inflicting upon him perforated eardrums. John Scott's experiments led to a vast array of discoveries relating to the workings of the human body, the natures of gases, and the often unpleasant intersection between the two. Number 4. Werner Forsman Forsman had theorized that certain drugs could be delivered more effectively into the bloodstream if they were administered directly into the heart. This was the basic principle behind what would become his revolutionary procedure, cardiac catheterization. In order to test this procedure, he enlisted a nurse to help him who agreed on the condition that he would perform the operation on her instead of himself. So he went ahead, secured her to the operating table, and then performed the operation on himself anyway, presumably screaming, it's too dangerous! While under the influence of local anesthetic, he went ahead and threaded a uretic catheter into his vein and straight up into his heart. Remember that the next time you're complaining about an injection. Number 3. Dr. Barry Marshall Along with his partner, Dr. Robin Warren, Marshall was studying the bacteria H. pylori when he became convinced of a connection between the bacteria and afflictions such as peptic ulcers and gastric cancer. Faced with ridicule from established scientists and doctors, it stands to reason that Marshall would respond by doing the least ridiculous thing that he could think of. But his actual response was to scull an entire petri dish filled with this bacteria. After three days, he developed nausea and halitosis. After five, he had progressed to vomiting, and by the eighth day, he had demonstrated that his own body had become a living bacteria farm, significantly advancing contemporary medical knowledge and proving his opponents wrong in the craziest and most awesome way possible. Number 2. Pierre and Marie Curie a French husband and wife duo with a keen interest in radiation, Pierre and Marie Curie literally defined the term radioactivity. In an effort to test how this strange activity, which they suspected could be harmful to humans' affected skin, the pair settled on a method for investigation. Pierre strapped raw radium to his bare arm, spitting in the eyes of such concepts as safety and healthy caution. After several days, his arm became red and inflamed. The longer it stayed on, the more painful and grievous the wounds became. This apparently just made the pair angry as they continued experimenting for several months, eventually gaining great knowledge of radiation burns, along with various changes during research. Number 1. Stubbins Firth In an effort to prove that yellow fever isn't contagious – note here, it absolutely is – Firth transcended the boundaries of hygiene, common decency, and sanity itself. He made incisions in his arms and then filled them with vomit from yellow fever patients, or he simply just poured it directly into his own eyeballs. He then moved on to blood, saliva, and urine, just in case anybody wasn't already disgusted enough. In the end, his work was all for nothing. The samples he had obtained had come from patients who were past the point of being contagious, which we would imagine would be pretty devastating to discover after spending months swallowing vomit. So I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, please do give us a thumbs up below. And do not forget to subscribe for brand new videos just like this every day of the week. For more from me, why not check out my other channel called Today I Found Out. You will find that linked to below. And as always, thank you for watching.